and they can they have all these complaints and bitching about these big creators yet they try to emulate the big creators themselves and they never help out the other small people they just want help for themselves and it's like yeah. it, it's it's a just a giant problem with um <laughs> anyone with an anime profile picture has this problem to be honest okay <laughs> like i'm just going to just generalize that Hold right on. now let me uh let me let me slide so i can get my my <laughs> my whole life merch better in frame for you Hello everyone and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, John. You know, you should like, have like a teleprompter right next to your camera. It's like mm -hmm. an invisible one, so you can actually just read and look at the camera, like you're on news, you know? I think you I mean, should just memorize fair, I have it on the same, I have it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I do have it on the same monitor that the camera is behind. But I do still have to glance over to it. Anyway, um, we also have our critic of the village idiot. Ironic. Chinoda. <laughs> Hello. The village idiot is the internet. And I criticize it. And yet you use it. And like yet we all I do. use it every <laughs> single day. Curious. Curious. <laughs> I'm it's curious. almost like I have an ad addiction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you can admit that, Chinoda. I really am. Because admitting there's a problem is the first step to solving it. Oh, buddy, I'm not trying to solve this. <laughs> also, Ian's back. Hi, Ian. Whoa. <laughs> oh is this my the God, quickest it's you've Ian. ever? Is this the quickest you've ever been back on the podcast? Because yeah, usually there's like a two or three months at the least between your visits, and now there's only like three weeks in between your visits. Well, if you had done this one day later, I would have been out of town. So you got <laughs> yes. it in just in time. Beautiful. It's a Beautiful good thing. Timing. It's a good thing I came to you when I did for uh, for asking you to be on with this. Because I do think with what we're talking about tonight, you do have um, a little bit of a different perspective than we do. Being that you do a lot of video essays on your channel, which people should definitely go check out. Which I will put down below in the description. Excellent uh, channel. Seriously. Yes. Go check it out. Um, also, uh, before we do get started, I do want to remind you, if you like what you see and want to see more, please consider liking the video and subscribing. It really, really helps us out. Um, but yeah, what we're going to be talking about tonight is, this is a really wordy uh, description of what we're talking about, so I hope that I will come up with something better for the title down the road. But it is the state of content creation and its effects on creativity, particularly within the anti-tubing sphere. That is very wordy, that is very verbose. Um... That's right, folks. We're going meta. It's like a white yeah, yeah. paper. It does. It, exa it yeah, It does sound like a white paper title. Come to think of it, um, who suggested but... this idea? I think it was you, John. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't remember the why. Regret. Well, John's like, well, well, well. If it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Listen, sometimes I just say things, and then I just forget I say things, okay? We were we were talking about, like, I, I don't know how we got onto this, but we were talking about how, like, um, there's not as much creativity in content creation anymore. And then you came up with this idea. It's like, yeah, there's, like, anti-tubers aren't that creative anymore either. Bro, how? This is, like, a conversation that we had, and I do not recall. This is only a week ago, too. <laughs> Hey, to be hey. fair, to be fair, you've been in the heat of Disney, so I mean, yeah. I, I don't blame you for forgetting a lot of stuff. Yeah, the California heat was beating down on me. Lost a couple brain cells. Um, I don't. That I honestly don't remember Disney. how I came about thinking about this, but I do remember, like, for example, like on on YouTube, there was a certain meta for YouTube Shorts, at least, to like review manga, and there were like a bunch of anti tubers who like pivoted towards doing that type of content where it's like oh, i'll just do a youtube short where it's like hey this manga is really cool uh, I, I, this is why people will probably like it and it was just like you know 15 20 second tidbit of it and that's actually how i discovered some more manga to read and i was like oh i kind of like this meta this is actually kind of nice just like hey you should check out rory dragon it's about a girl who's also half dragon that's the premise that's it look at the art and i'm like oh the art looks pretty cute i like it and i read it yeah i mean it definitely has its place, I think. Um, 
I, I was going to start about, well, you know what? I'll, I'll start off with this. So I, I want to ask each of you here, um, and in particular you, Ian, uh, for what you do. Um, what is each of y'all's thoughts about like the current state of content creation online? And if you guys are more optimistic or pessimistic about the trajectory it's on, um, especially with what we do on YouTube. So I think it depends. It's like a really complicated answer to your like yes or no question, basically. Mm. Um, it kind of depends because at scale, I think it kind of sucks. Like the biggest like the people who make like millions and millions of dollars and have like billions of views on their channel like that to that level i'm pretty pessimistic about it because it's all kind of become homogenated it's all just kind of the same like you know ten thousand dollars like i'm gonna give ten thousand dollars for this or like you know like all the mr beast claims. i bought an island for yeah. one dollar wow <laughs> I survive um, in space for 10 days. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I know that's like how it works, but it used to be, it used to be like, it was like let's plays and stuff like that. And then I got mm -hmm. saturated, but now it it's like, what makes me pessimistic about it is there's such a barrier to entry now for that, like at scale, huge style of video, because you need to have yeah. the money to, to put into it. And so, yeah, like yeah. that. That's that stuff sucks. I don't like that. It's a huge investment up front for stuff like that. For yeah. no guarantee of payoff. I don't remember there was a another YouTuber like maybe it was uh Jack Septicai. I do not recall which YouTuber talked about this, but they were talking about how uh Mr. Beast changed the game. Like Jimmy changed it because because it's like he dropped so much money on the videos that he makes that if you want to be successful like him, you have to at least I wouldn't say you have to drop as much money as Jimmy, but the video needs to seem like it dropped as much money as Jimmy did. It has to be yeah. at the scale of what he's yeah. doing per video, which is like, I hired a hitman to come uh, find me for a million dollars, and he like <laughs> and he blows up a bank with a tank. I remember watching that video, and I was like, dude, what? The what? F <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly, okay. bro. Yeah, makes me wonder what like if actual billionaires had youtube channels what would they actually do it's gonna happen <laughs> i mean yeah unfortunately it, that's the kind of content they're gonna create though <laughs> it just feels like that is reaching its end point that doesn't mean mm. i think it's gonna go away anytime soon but it just feels like there's only so much you can do mm -hmm. with like i did this with this amount of money before like i mean like <sighs> clearly it has literally tens of millions of views every time one of those videos comes out so like whatever but that's the kind of stuff i'm pessimistic about just from a creativity standpoint because mm. that's just what people try to copy now um well, but it's like the there's a a rise in ai generated content on uh youtube and stuff like that mm. specifically where I'm, I'm finding channels that are being recommended to me that have like thirty thousand subscribers and like hundreds of thousands of views and it's like it's it's just stock image and ai voiceover talking about information i've i already know and mm. it's just like a bunch of channels like these are just cropping up left and right and it's like they're just recycling content and yeah, yeah. it's it's like it's not like a video essay where it's a in-depth and something actually interesting is happening where i'm listening to someone uh talk about a series in depth giving their own insights and things like that which is actually great this is just it's just vapid it's it's so surface level of like i read wikipedia and i'm regurgitating the wikipedia information to you right now yeah so that that's what's happening the last couple of years has been really interesting to watch that happened to just video essays as a genre on youtube mm -hmm. yep where mm -hmm. it like four three or four years ago became really really popular like the long hour long however long video essay um because it's long people watch them and it makes a lot of ad money because because of how long it is and youtube likes right. it because people are watching it for a long amount of time but yeah. then what happens similar to what we were just talking about is then a bunch of people start copying it and what's happened is almost this i don't know how to describe it but it's almost this point where video essay has no meaning anymore because when you say video essay there's a very distinct 
I, in my head, a very distinct idea. It's probably a longer video. It's well researched. It's about something, a topic, depending on what genre or like what, whether it's anime or games or whatever, but it's additive. And what's happened is people have started calling any longer video a video essay. Right. Um, and that's and, not what a video essay is, is the no. thing. Like, video essays are entirely different thing. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, there's They're a difference essays. between a long video and a video essay. Because a, a video can be long, but not actually be analyzing anything. See, I, I gotta apologize. I Whenever I see a video that's over 25 minutes, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a video essay. <laughs> I, you see, that's the thing, though. I mean, that's that's it. That's, that's what, what it's talking about. It's like, that's the perception now. <laughs> but I... Even though I know that there's a difference, I still just call it, well, it's a video essay in my mind because you can't be I a forget. video essay unless you're over 25 minutes in length. I forget who it was, but uh, recently, I think it was YouTube put out like a, a tweet or something on uh, some social media site saying that like, you know, we appreciate everyone who makes, you know, longer 20 plus minute videos. I, I, there was some... Uh, creator like respected youtube creator i forget who it was now that said uh 20 minutes is not a long video fuck you youtube <laughs> it's just wow. it, it's becoming um a thing where we're like reaching the like polarization where it's like either people want a short that's like 30 seconds long or they want a four hour video that they can put on while they're doing something or that like they can watch right. in parts or something like that. Yeah. Like I, I love going to 30 plus minute long videos. Cause I'm like, I need to go edit a video or I need to eat. <laughs> I need to turn on something for 30 minutes. It just yeah. it has to be playing. I don't know why uh, I need, I need to do some vacuuming. Let me find a three hour long video. <laughs> Yes, that's so. exactly what I use it for. I got to do dishes. <laughs> like, I love it. There, there's like there's like a handful of like science creators that I follow who who will like every two to three months release like a three to four hour long video on some niche topic, and I'm like, I am ready to lock the fuck in. <laughs> oh, I love so, watching um cartoon like review channels, like people who talk about South Park and other cartoons, like failed cartoons and stuff of like Cartoon Network, Disney just it's just i don't know it's interesting to me i've always liked cartoons hence you know the anime thing so yeah. i'll have to agree with the ian on this unfortunately i'm more of a pessimistic take as well i think the quality of videos uh has gone down overall especially even in the any tubing uh sphere which in my opinion is very unfortunate but I think with the, as he said earlier, homogenization of uh, videos and topics, uh, along with the fact that so many people have just been doing this for so long, the amount of quality you get has gone down and you really need to seek out diamonds in the rough. And there's a lot of rough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I do want to say I am, because that was the first half of my point, the other half of my point that I've, we've been talking about now for 10 minutes was that I am optimistic at like a smaller, like a creator level. Like as a whole, if we're talking about content creation in its mm. totality, I am pessimistic about it. But I do think there's still tons of people on the platform, on any platform that are doing really good work, right. really creative work. Yeah. Oh, sure, absolutely. Do you think you just have to work harder to find that good content now? Because YouTube, yes. YouTube in particular, just mm. loves to pedal the slop it in your recommended feed. Yeah, it's so it's that I think I'm most versed in obviously anime and then video games. That's most of the stuff. Gaming is most mm. of the stuff I watch mm -hmm. like video essays for and then some other stuff. I've been watching a lot of like amusement park, like Disney reviews lately. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just like I think because I really like, um, oh, my God, I can't defunct land. And so oh, I got yes. my, I love all my, out of all video, my man. recommendations have just gotten filled with that stuff because I watched a bunch of the Funk Land. But I think any genre about pop culture, because those are basically the ones that I'm, I involve myself in, there are pl plenty of people you can find. And like anything, yeah. there are plenty of people you can find sub 100K, sub 10K that are doing great work. And it's just yeah. not being you know shown to the correct people or being shown to enough people. Well, I feel like the problem is that so on how how YouTube's home landing page um, algorithm works is like there's ten videos or something eight or ten videos that are recommended to you, um, eight are like 
all of them except one will be related to things you have watched mm -hmm. and one will just be a completely random like small creator sub a thousand views type of video like sub a thousand subs it's just like hey this is kind of similar to the content that you watch but this is a small creator which is great that's it's great that youtube's algorithm is pushing stuff like that however in the sea of like billions and billions of videos being uploaded every day it's kind of it's, it's worthless so they fixed that from what i this is all you know just assumptions right because i don't actually know how that stuff works but from what i've seen the last few months they've fixed what was a problem last year which oh. was that small channels would get a couple maybe a few thousand in what i like to call crap impressions mm -hmm. like i would i would keep like i don't watch let's plays on youtube anymore but i watch gaming content like video essays usually or reviews and I was getting, without fail, I'd log in, I'd go to my homepage, and I'd get, like, a, like part four of someone's Let's Play that had 13 views in my recommended. And, like, I'm never I'm never going to click on that. Maybe, like, once out of morbid curiosity, because I'm like, oh, why is this here? But I'm never going to click on it, I'm never going to watch it. And so for that person, they're getting, their video is getting impressions, but it's getting impressions for people that aren't interested. And so all it's doing is is killing the CTR. Mm -hmm. And then the YouTube goes, oh, I guess nobody wants to watch this. And then it stops pushing it out to people. And so that was happening in my videos last year, too, where I, they would get like four, five, six, eight thousand impressions day one with like a one percent CTR. And then it would just kill it and it'd flatline. Oh. And wow, so that it is weird. It, it's the, this year's been I haven't uploaded much this year. So I'm, this is going off of a couple of videos. <laughs> But um, it's been much better this year, so I, I'm hoping they fine tuned it a little bit, where you'll get, you'll still get a couple thousand impressions, but it's more gradual. Right. And I've I've noticed that with our videos, especially since like I want to say April or so. Um, to that... be fair, our, our videos are odd. They'll be like some would just be yeah. great, and then some would just be like absolute dog water. Like, it's like all right, I don't for... know what happened here. <laughs> For for example, so far at least this year, by far our best performing video, not counting any of the shorts that we do, because our shorts are like a actual mixed bag. Like they can get five views or they can get five thousand views That's in a all day. Shorts. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but by far our most uh, watched and highest amount of watch time and CTR we've gotten on any video we put out has been for our spoiler cast for season two, part two of Mashoku Tensei. Like, it blows everything else out of the water. And our spoiler cast, by and large, do so much better than anything else that we put out. And I feel like that's because a lot of our spoiler casts have to do with things that, you know, just ended. Things that people are, want to know yeah. about and want to, like, do I watch this 12 episodes of anime or do I listen to these four idiots talk about it for about an hour and a half? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> do you guys but, I mean, get most of your views from Search? Or is it literally being recommended to people? You um, know, off, so off from, from, from what I have noticed, especially in the last couple of years, uh, a majority of our views come from either people who are subscribed or mm -hmm. from people who are uh, recommended it randomly, either mm -hmm. at okay. an end of, a, of one video, like a, a related video from someone else, or through the recommended feed, like the homepage feed on YouTube. Because almost all of my, for a couple years now, almost all of my backlog views that I get daily are from search. Are really? from people huh. searching, usually just searching the show name and then clicking on the video and watching it. I will say we have a couple of videos that get, get like that where like, I want to say months after we put them out, they'll see a surge of activity and it's because people are searching for that thing now. It's like, and that happens occasionally when we put out like, um, spoiler cast for classic anime it won't necessarily do that yeah. well like the the first week or so that we put it out but months later or sometimes even years down the road it'll see a huge spike in activity because like uh, netflix the picked it up or something Net yeah netflix yeah. picked it up or it's coming out on a, a new 4k remaster on blu-ray or something so this all does have to do with the algorithm and that's one of our talking yeah. points so i'd love to go to that if you guys don't mind yeah, we're, um, yeah. So, has chasing the algorithm, especially on YouTube, let's say, uh, have led creators to driving into the trending topics just for views alone and the metrics, yeah. other than rather than you know 
wanting to actually talk about it. What do you guys think? I think 100%. that there are some anti-tubers that, you know, like the, the manga recommendation ones uh, that I found through YouTube shorts that I liked. They were recommending a lot of good manga, and then they started recommending manga that are soon to be adapted into anime that they think will get popular. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I I know about this manga because it's literally one of the top performing Shonen Jump mangas or something. And it's like, yeah. yes, I know it's getting an anime. Like, I didn't need this to be recommended to me, but it's because they need to make numbers. They they need to continue to to grow, so they do it. And it's just like, it's it sucks. Uh, I'd rather learn about some obscure manga that no one has ever known about than <laughs> something that's I could have found on Shonen Jump's For Me page. <laughs> yeah. It's so tough, right? Because, like, the actual answer to your question is yes. I think a lot of people across genres have just, it's just doing, oh, what's working? I'm going to do that. Um, and, like, you can hate on it from a creative standpoint, right? Because, like, yeah, you can. It's seen as it can be creatively bankrupt, but I do think there's a way to find a middle ground of like, you know, I want to talk about anime. I'm gonna make a JJK video because that's the most popular anime out right now. But if you do genuinely care about Jujutsu Kaisen, then like it's just you know it's it's trending, but also you're doing something that you care about, right? Yeah, it becomes tough when it's like like you're just like what's the hot topic i'm gonna make a drama video about it and then like that's it that's the kind of content i i really don't like in any genre really but there's a few you know i'll see anime anime's not quite as bad and we can talk about anti-tube in a little bit because there's a whole that's a whole can different can of worms but i definitely see it more in like bigger communities like gaming particularly where people will just grift Right, they'll just be yeah, like, "I'm going to get all the time, mad yeah. about this thing because it's the hot topic," and then I'm going to move on in a couple of days and get mad about something else, and then, you know, they're just doing it to make money. It's it's particularly bad with like the culture warrior stuff, I think too. Yeah. Um, I I don't see as much of that in the anime space as I do it's gaming, there. It's, but it's definitely I mean, there. It's a smaller community. <laughs> I, gaming is such a big community now. Yeah. And it's I see you know, it on they're... Twitter. Oh yeah, like a lot. Uh, yeah, but... yeah. But going back to what Ian was saying, like when we did our spoiler cast for Mashoka Tensei, like we all enjoyed it, so we wanted to talk about it. Now, it, it, granted, it was a big show; it just ended, so it really helped that we put it out when we did. Um, but we still enjoyed doing it, so I don't feel like we were necessarily chasing the algorithm as much as we were just talking about a show we're all passionate about right i just think it's so easy to because if you whenever anyone asks someone who's like had success on the platform um Mm -hmm. about like oh well how did how do you do that and it's always like you don't don't chase the you know just make stuff you want to make like don't don't and it's like yeah i guess that's true but like i think that's a false answer though because like you do need to chase algorithms to grow which is one of the unfortunate parts you need to make it to have fun so I it's think convoluted. That it's like yes, metrics and analytics do matter, right? We, we yeah. want to. There is a meta to this whole gaming. SE, um, SEO matters. SEO matters. Uh, but I think the bigger answer to that is that you should be passionate about what you're doing. Because if I'm watching a video, I can tell if someone's passionate about what they're talking about or not. And Absolutely. if it's something like an anime review, for example, if you don't really care about the anime then you don't really have any criticisms about it that would make me go like, yes, I agree, or no, I think you're wrong, and then I would comment and share or whatever. If it's just like, oh, I want to talk about JJK because, you know, JJK is ending, guys. Let's let's make a video about it. And it's like none of us actually care about JJK that much. I don't think anyone would care about that video because it's like, who cares? You're not a fan of the the franchise of the series. It's like you've, you've watched it in passing, but you don't know anything else other than like, oh, yeah, jjk it's popular yeah Ian? i uh when we did uh, so when not only do we do anime content on our youtube channel we also do 
game streams as well. Um, when we, when John and I were doing a game stream series for Dead Space, like it was fun having John on with me as sort of a backseater <laughs> because John is super passionate about Dead Space. He loves that game series. And while I was playing the game and occasionally being scared out of my fucking mind, uh, John is just sitting there talking about like development things for <laughs> yeah. the game that were interesting. It's like, so this is how they actually did the pathing in this room for this enemy. And I'm like, okay, because he's so passionate about it. I was enjoying listening to him talk about and, and hearing the passion in his voice talking about it. So, like, it may not have been... I mean, I did enjoy the first two Dead Space games a lot, uh, but it was more... It well, was a more two. enjoyable experience for me because <laughs> yeah, I got to hear how passionate games. he was. <laughs> yeah, there's only, two Dead there's only two Dead Space games. games. Just, like there's only, just like there's only two seasons of uh, Code Geass, right? <laughs> God, they're like on season uh, five now or something. They I know. Even... Fuck, fuck you and your goddamn corpse beating. It, but it's one of those things where... Like, you can say, like, oh, you have to be passionate. But I feel like there's so many people these days, there's, it's so saturated mm-hmm. that they're, everyone's passionate. Like, you know. Like, and so you have to find something that you care about just because, like, it, so it'll do well. Not, not so, sorry. So not, yeah. so, it'll do, so not so it'll do well, but so you don't go insane. Right. Yeah. Like, that's And it also thing. has to stand out. It has to stand out in a sea of similarity. And because this is like why you say my... it's, it's so it's so like saturated and everything's so similar. Obviously, if you're going to do the same stuff that everyone else is doing, you have to at least present it differently. Yeah, which is why my entire persona of hating on everything that's popular works really well. <laughs> <for> <laughs> like you know, he says that as a joke, but there's like four or five people in our Discord server who like legitimately look forward to him bitching about stuff in episodes of our podcast. I think it's more than that, actually. I've, I've heard a lot of people tell me about how much they like me bitching about stuff, and I'm like, why? <laughs> I, it's that, like, that's the other thing I would say, uh, as always made me pessimistic for years, is like, negative content just does better. Negative videos, <laughs> yeah, negative yeah. opinions, it just yeah. does better. It like, does. I it hate does. it, though. I and it, you hate know, it so much. The thing is, I like, I like negative video content when people are going against the grain, if they have valid criticisms and are actually critique, like when they're talking about the show, other than like, Oh, I just hate it. It's like, okay, but yeah. why do you hate it? Well, I just don't like it. Like what about it? Don't you like, I need to know. Yeah. I get that. Justify yeah. why I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need someone to justify it for me, please. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, because it's also, very surface level that if as long as someone says something that has uh that backs up and validates your opinion of it you can just stop the research there it's like well he proves my point this man has made a video explaining why he hates it and i also believe that's why i hate this show i stop my research there at all i need to explain why i don't like this popular show which is kind of also another thing that i i really hate about the content creation online right now there's so many people making video content, like like with video essays, how they've just transformed to being so um, surface level, so vapid. Mm-hmm. It's there's not a lot of research in these anymore, and that, that's something that I think is really bad. Because I I have seen the regurgitation of like this is especially bad in the um like what was it called? Is it murder mystery? Whatever the uh, true crime, the true crime, the true, true crime, crime yeah. stuff, yeah. Yeah, like I've seen a rehash of a lot of true crime stories that I've heard the exact same Wikipedia entries on. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, why are you making this? Like, do you I understand that these channels exist because it's like people want to listen to it. They they want to listen to some person's nice voice as they narrate over the story. But what are you providing to this extra content that I don't already know? Why why would I want to watch that? But I, I understand that I'm not the typical person who w- listens to this type of content or watches this type of content. So it's hard for me to understand why anyone else would want to when it's like, the first time I heard it, I understood what the story is about. But the next 10 times for 10 different uh, creators telling me about it, seeing the exact same information, I don't see the appeal in that. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious when you guys are a passionate about an anime specifically how do you handle uh balancing your passion with uh critiquing it oh john just bashes the shit out of everything yeah. Even stuff oh yeah like it I doesn't matter that. if i love the series 
Um, He'll say I, it's the worst thing ever. <laughs> see, it's the it's pro a problem for me because especially if I love a series, I hate to crit I, actually let me. I'm not gonna lie, I don't hate to critique anything. I love critiquing shit. <laughs> I like talking shit. Again, King of the Hater Olympics. But uh, I mean, my soul dies on the inside when I have to critique things I do like, and it's like, ah, oh, it could be so much better. <laughs> It, it was so much better, and you ruined it. <laughs> Look at what you did to my boy. <laughs> uh, but other than that, like I, I don't pull any punches because to being authentic when I review things is part of my way that I express my love for a show. If I'm not being truthfully honest about its adaptation, then I feel like I'm doing a disservice of being a fan of the series. Because it's like, if especially if you love the source beer like I do with like Overlord, I have to be critical of it. I can't just give it a pass just because like, well, it's better in the light novel, so it's still a great series. It's like, yeah, the light novel maybe, but the anime is fucking ass. And I'm I'm looking forward to the movie, but I I have reservations about it because it's gonna be two volumes, two volumes in one yeah. in one movie, mm -hmm. and it's like they're the same. It's the same arc because uh, Mariyama had to split it into part one part two but i mean i'm always hopeful for new anime for things that i like even though i know it's like it's gonna suck uh, i thought that season four of overlord was better than season three by a long shot though it still dropped the ball in a lot of places uh that i did <laughs> to like, say the least to say the least but you know again i i it's it's easy for me to be able to like just shit on stuff without regard yeah. for my love of it just because if something's wrong with it, then something's wrong with it. Just because I like it doesn't mean it's perfect. And it's okay if it's not perfect. It's fine to like shows that aren't perfect. Yeah. There's a, um, a video essayist on YouTube uh, who does a lot of video essays around uh, games and game series. His name is The Salt Factory. Um, and he, in one of his videos a couple years ago, he said something about critiquing stuff that you love and he says that you should critique the stuff that you love you should be critical of it because it's the only way that people who make stuff that you love get better at it by hearing people critique the things that you love and i'm like yeah Ooh. you should you shouldn't be afraid to say that hey i love this thing but here is problem a b and c with it okay how about you ian i mean i think it's one and the same i like <clears throat> I think it just depends on how you approach talking about media and like I and that's a thing I see people have problems with where it's like no if I like this thing it's flawless and if I don't like this thing it's the worst thing ever created and that's why that's how you reach these like it's like two true true outcomes it's either it's a 10 out of 10 or it's a 0 out of 10 mm. but like one of my most disliked videos it might be the most in terms of like the ratio on my channel is about the third my hero academia movie in which oh. i went i went man i wish this was better it wasn't it was like fine it wasn't great <laughs> and it's just like people getting mad about that yeah. i didn't even say it was bad i was like eh, it's yeah like not what do you mean this hold on go <laughs> ian is is there a way to actually sort by most disliked on your uh, no YouTube you studio? have to oh fuck because i, I want to know what our most i want to know what our most disliked thing is unfortunately i don't believe so i think you have to you have to scroll through manually oh god i, I, yeah, I really like, want to um, know what it is now yeah so <laughs> That happened to like uh, Joey from um, the Anime Man when he talked about uh, Jujutsu Kaisen when it first came out. He was like, "Yeah, I thought the Jujutsu Kaisen movie was all right." And then everyone in the comments were just like flaming him. Like, you just said it was mid. You said it wasn't that great. And it's like, dude, he said it was all right. Like, he didn't say it was bad. He said it was all right. Yeah, th I this know. Is... I found it. I found. It. I found our most disliked thing. It's actually a short oh, no. where John says that friend sucks. It only oh, has yeah. a ten percent. It has a that. ten percent like to dislike ratio. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I know. People Man. actually like friends. It's insane. Friends. Let me say something. People who love friends love friends. <laughs> Yeah. The comments the were wild. <laughs> the comments on that were wild. They were telling John to like go kill himself. <laughs> No, they're like, do you know how well Friends performs outside of the U.S.? And I'm like, <laughs> what does that have to do with Friends sucking as a show? <laughs> so there's, there's no way anything on our channel has better than a, or worse than a 10% like to dislike ratio. 
for me, uh, personally, um, it's a lot harder to be balanced uh, about shows I'm passionate about. I can sometimes give them criticisms here and there, but for me, I'm when I'm biased towards something, it's a lot more difficult for me. And that's a that's a fault I own up to, and it, it's something I'm trying to work on personally, but. See, when I don't I'm biased, think you I'm head have over heels. to, right? I don't think you personally, any person specifically, has to be like, "Well, no, you have to, you have to be able to critique your favorites." Like, no, I don't think that's something that any specific person has to be able to do. I just don't like it when other when people take other people critiquing it as like a personal slight against <laughs> yeah, themselves. Yeah. Exactly. That's oh, yeah. that's when it becomes a problem. Yeah, like I will say this to note in defense of you is that you are super passionate about things right after you watch them. If you give them a month or two, if you come back to them, you're like, eh, maybe this wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah, no, I You just need time. You just need time because you, to digest. You, have this t you have this tendency, like, after you finish something, especially if you've invested a lot of time in it, to think, this was good because I invested time in I it. I stand for it. <laughs> I stand <laughs> for the, it. Let the honeymoon period end. Yeah. And then like, you know... It, maybe it wasn't that great. Yes. <laughs> whereas, whereas John won't even wait until something's finished. He'll be in the middle of something and say, "This is shit." <laughs> I mean, I don't. It's people have biases. That's something you can't really oh, shake. Yeah. Like I have yeah. biases. Um, I can try to be as subjective or objective in my critiques of shows, but honestly, I feel like all my criticisms of shows, whether I like them or not, are all just subjective anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, there's just things I, I don't like or I don't agree with where I'm like this is dumb it shouldn't have been like this I don't understand this uh, and it's just me basically just bitching for an hour and a half and yeah. that's that, that's content that's content that people like <laughs> and I will continue to make the concept of like completely ob a completely objective review just doesn't exist right and I think trying to do that would just hinder hinder your own voice and your own videos if you were doing that or whatever you're doing whatever type of content you're making yeah and so like i i want people to be open about like i don't i think people should have biases and like prefer things over that's just how it works and then that's how you're supposed to know whether or not you trust someone's opinion on something yeah i mean everyone's gonna have their likes and their dislikes and i think that should 100 percent come through in how you critique things like yeah. if i were to go into like say john name a shitty isekai that's out right now right now yeah failure frame failure frame. okay if i were to go <laughs> if i were to go into failure frame because i have a natural bias against fucking isekai it's a hard sell for me i probably won't enjoy it regardless of whether it's good or not and this has all led to a very weird thing, just to bring it back to AnyTube, where reviews are just, like, dead. Reviews have been dead for a few yeah. years in terms of, like, actual significant traffic and, like, views. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because no one goes out... People that look for reviews are looking to have their own opinion um, substantiated. Validated. Yeah, that's it. Validated yeah. or challenged, or just to compare. No, I don't even. I don't think most people want their views challenged. Like they go well, in with preconceived notions, and they want it just to be reinforced. People have yeah. a challenge in that they'll look for like the show's bad, and they like that show, and they'll go in and be angry. People like being angry. Yeah, and so yeah. like it's less <laughs> being online, challenged, yeah. well, and more just yeah, like something it, to get mad about. And like like you said before, like the negative content side sort of sells better. Like yeah, it, being angry helps you sell that negative content. And so what's happened is that you know anime reviews are are like basically non-existent in terms of like huge videos, but manga manga has is a enough of a it's weird to call it a new medium because it's not a new medium, but but the avail the like huge availability of it legally at the very least has been a fairly recent development right last yeah. 10 years or so and so there are there's also just more manga but there's there are so many series that people don't know about that they'll be like oh what is this and then they'll it's like those manga review videos not even the shorts the ones that are like i read 15 manga and it's just like <laughs> short little couple minutes about each those do incredible at least they were yeah. a couple years ago and it's because 
it's almost taken the place of anime because it feels like every big anime people just know about now but there's plenty of manga that people have no idea about and so that's yeah. almost filled that niche for now of what anime reviews used to do yeah because like <laughs> i'm guilty of it i like finding manga recommendations through youtube <laughs> just because like there's so much out there that's like okay i used to spend you know four hours every day reading manga i don't anymore so it's hard for me to just scroll through and like this looks interesting of a title right it says isekai in it click or this <laughs> this art on this cover looks really pretty click so it's like how do i get recommendations i have to go watch a video and there are plenty of people who do that which is to me i like just because which like, is it gives i would say that's starting point. that's a I would say that's a good thing for like shorts and short form content for like those recommendations. Like here's your, your basic synopsis. Here's a few panels from your manga. You, you can, you can showcase like maybe from volume one or whatever. And then like you give like a brief example of like, if you like this, then you might like this manga here. Like that's something that I think is good for short form content recommendations like that. So, speaking of shorts, I'd actually love to move on to our, uh, one of our other uh, things to talk about. What do you guys think of the rise of short-form content and how it's affected media criticism? And what do you think is the best use of it? Hey, and the I don't worst, have... if you want to put that in. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't have my keys to jangle in front of the camera nearby. But... <laughs> yeah, that is probably well, let me one put of on my Subway favorite... Subway Surfers right here, okay? Yeah. Right. Go go ahead. <laughs> uh, personally, I, dude, I, I doom scroll through YouTube Shorts constantly when I have nothing else to do with my life, and it's just like when he's on the toilet. <laughs> in general, not even when I'm on the toilet anymore. It's just in general. It's evolved to the point where I'm like, I'm bored. Go to YouTube Shorts, scroll, 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 and there's so much content that's generated through YouTube Shorts where it's obviously ai generated um and i i hate it and there's no way to get rid of it it's just there's such a plethora of channels doing this type of stuff and it's just it sucks and it's always it's repost cross posts from twitter from freaking instagram reels from tiktok and it's all just recycled garbage and yet here i am consuming it consistently <laughs> and it's you're part just, of the problem john i know it it Dude, they, they learned the freaking site. They hacked your brain and learned how to make it. Like, it doesn't matter if you like it or not. You're going to shovel this down your throat. Um, yeah. So I, I personally think it's taken a uh, step backwards in content, like the state of content creation. It's just, it's it's fine to use and utilize to expose people to things because it's a very fast way of like advertising your channel, right? Yeah. Do a YouTube short do whatever funny thing within at least that's what i think of when i do youtube shorts uh well, funny thing happens within it. yeah funny thing happens within three to five seconds of the video it gets people interested to stay on your video if it's going to be longer than 10 15 seconds for them to facilitate to watch your reviews and i yeah, know that that's... directly correlates the people watching our videos yeah, that's exactly what we do with our shorts. Well, for the most part, because a vast majority of our shorts are literally just clips from the podcast that are taken out of context because they're either funny or someone said something like completely out of pocket. Um, and I just go in, yeah, like Dr. Chinoda. Um, and uh, I will just go in there and I'll edit some wacky sound effects or put some cutaway in there to something else. And then like, that's it. That just to sell the kind of stuff that we do and sometimes it works because i'll put something out it'll get thousands and thousands of views and we'll end up getting like 10 15 more subscribers from it i'm like cool how about you I, how do you use shorts i don't really i um, on and off i'll use them occasionally it's just it's just like i it works fine as like a type of media i think i'm not gonna like completely hate like i don't love it but i use it enough that like it's like i'll watch like cooking videos on like shorts and like food reviews and stuff that's fine i don't think it works great for media crit critique no, i think not at all. It, it's just too sh it just doesn't work for for that type of content but people still do it because it's whatever works i don't love that it's been pushed the last few years is more like you should be doing this instead of making long form content because i just find long form content more interesting mm. but i don't know I, i'm kind of indifferent about it at this point 
it exists. People watch it. I'm not as much like I don't use TikTok. I'm not like as much into it. I found it a lot, honestly, more interesting when there was more of a time crunch on it. Like short still, short still has the one minute, but TikTok yeah. you can do like ten minute videos now or whatever. Like it's just becoming vertical YouTube. Where like Vine <laughs> was interesting because it was so short that you had it was creating it was that with the time constraint was making it more creative because you would have to use the time constraint to use the timing for your comedy. And that's why everybody at the time loved Vine. But then because yeah. it's not that long, you can't, you can't monetize it as well. I mean, there's a plethora of issues from a business standpoint. Right. But I just find, I find short, short form content is fine, but we're, I feel like we're all just kind of working our way back to what YouTube was 15 years ago, <laughs> which was short videos anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which was sub back to the meta of sub 10, 10 minute videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my uh, my take on short content is I like it as comedy content and I like it as um, succinct summaries of videos. I'll take it as that. But in terms of media criticism, I don't think it works at all because you just need more time to explain... Uh, what you're criticizing, you need you need uh, time mm -hmm. to the whole process of it. You just can't do it in under a minute. You can't like unless yeah. you're doing a really poor job of it, or you're just gonna list out the points for someone to read, and that's it. Which and you I, can go to Wikipedia. I don't think that's doing that. it justice. Yeah, I don't think that does it justice. Um, I disagree, Chinoda. I feel like I could create an entire channel based around 60 seconds of me shitting on something, and it'd be very successful. <laughs> you already said you'd because... create a channel based around something else, and you never did, buddy. <laughs> because, yeah, no, it would work It would work for what John's talking about because it's negative content, and as we have talked about, negative content it just inherently sells better. <sighs> You're I right, hate, and I hate, I hate that. that it's that way. I absolutely hate that it's that way because I would much rather watch like it doesn't even have to be an inherently positive review of something or a critique. It's like I but I would have I would happily watch something that's like the I don't like this, but this is how I think it could be better, as opposed to I hate this and everyone should hate it. I can uh, I can agree with that. Um I do think the best use of short form content is Probably comedy. I, I think that's what makes it go. Kitty! There's Hi, a cat. Kitty! That's oh, a sorry, cat butt. Hello, distracted. cat butt. Look at that butt. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that cat butt. <laughs> for the our, butt. Don't, don't right touch For audio microphone. only uh, listeners, Ian's cat is. Ian's, in Ian's print. cat has made an appearance. She What's never comes up. My, she never comes up on my desk either. This is very funny. Uh, Yuzu. Yuzu. Hi, Yuzu. Oh my god, she's so cute. Okay, um, sorry. Dude, um, this Alex. completely derailed what we were talking about. It's fine. It's fine. Um, uh, so, you know, using YouTube short, com uh, like using shorts as a for comedy is fine. Like, I think it's yeah. good for creativity because I I find it pretty funny. But I, mean, I also there, think there that... have been some memes that have come out of our podcast from it. That's for sure. You know, just screaming into the microphone, deep fried, come to deep mind. Fried. <laughs> oh. God. But no, uh, what I hate the most about the shorts content in general is just the the incessant just reposting of stuff. Just it's yeah. the same stuff being recycled. Yeah, it yeah. really proliferates the recycled content, and it's that's the, the new version of the Twitter screenshot on Instagram. Yeah, like on yes, <laughs> on Reddit, yeah, on I funny on like a nine <laughs> gag on. And it's just like this is so I hate this. It's just a new iteration of that. You're right. You're right. Um, so another like aspect to all this is social media, right? Because I think with the how everyone uses social media to sort of advertise their content and their communities now, um, there's this fear that, that certainly in my own mind there is of like outrage mobs and cancel culture and shit, especially coming from places like Twitter. Uh, so I wonder how that has affected people's creativity over the years too because like i'll give you a good example from my own personal perspective right i've wanted to for a couple of years now i've thought about doing video essays like ian does 
Um, and I think I could very easily sit down and write out, you know, scripts for stuff, especially for stuff that I'm super passionate about. But there was something last year I really wanted to do that on after I watched something. There was an anime that came out last year called Heavenly Delusion. And I had this idea. It's like this anime, for those who haven't seen it, goes into issues of like gender dysphoria, gender identity. It talks about uh, concepts of like what it means to be the person you are. And I'm thinking to myself, this is really interesting stuff. And I think I could have, I have a lot to say about this, especially in the realms of like psychology, because I would like to analyze it through like Jungian psychology, especially through like his concept of the shadow, the psychological shadow. Um, but I know the second, I start talking about like transgender identity and stuff like that. It's immediately going to be politicized by people who watch it, even if I don't politicize it in the content that I make. And that terrifies me. All right. It's like that whole, um, the Harry Potter game and the cancelization of it because people don't like JK. Hogwarts Howard. legacy. Or yeah, that yeah, one. yeah. Yeah. Hogwarts legacy. Uh, yeah. how people wanted to play it, but couldn't play it because, there's just haters, constant haters. And yeah. it's it, it sucks because that is one of the other factors that we have to consider when publishing content. Like, if we post this thing or talk about this certain show that there is an angry mob about just hating it, like, we can't... Yeah. If we don't join the angry mob, then, like, is it really worth it to make the video if we don't have that strong of an attachment to it anyway? It's just something we want to talk about in passing or casually. Yeah. It's like, why would you want to make content that is only going to attract a hate mob? Because instead of hating it, you're just like, eh, it wasn't that bad. Like, it's yeah. really shitty. Um, like, yeah. I I would hope that we could all just make content that we want to talk about and people who enjoy listening to it would enjoy it. But because people weaponize it and, again, you know, because my opinion saying this wasn't that bad automatically means I agree with J.K. Rowling in that I'm a transphobe now. It's 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 insane. Like the the leaps yeah. that people go through on the internet. It's like the, because the you're not gymnastics. part of this hate mob, then you must obviously <laughs> be with them. And it's like what? Yeah. When did that ever happen? When did I ever just, say that? Yeah. Just because you're not taking up the pitchfork, it means that you must support them. Yeah. It's it's dumb. But and then but at the same time, it's like well, I don't care about it passionately enough to even mention it then because it's just too much trouble. Like, I didn't yeah. care about the, the Hogwarts legacy enough to talk about it at all, so that's why I never brought it up. Which is fair enough. But do you ever, like, do you ever worry about that with the stuff that you create, Ian? Like, the fact that you're gonna, like, hit a nerve of the I mean, the wrong type, or something's gonna be taken the wrong way that you say? Not really. Not from... I mean, it, for the most part, if it was ever something about that, it would be something I feel strongly about. Mm. And the people who would get mad about it are people whose opinions I don't care about. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously yeah. there's some, con there would be, there's like some, I mean, I have friends who have made content who have gotten like, you know, hate for stuff. Um, but it, I, I just think if you, if it's something you genuinely believe in, then it's not worth, I mean, it is worth that then. Right. Right. Like it's yeah. not worth yeah. not making it because you're afraid that someone might get mad about something. Yeah. Right, like that. Like, I guess for me, they're wanting to do video essays like the one I, I laid out. Um, I guess my fear comes from the fact that it's not just myself that I have to worry about. There's three other people I do this podcast with. Not that I did. Not that I don't think they could handle it or they couldn't take it. Because trust me, they could. They're just as much shit talkers as I am. But what? what it's are just you talking about. I've never about like if people came after us for something that I said, you, you would either, either A, you would throw me into the bus and be like, fuck him, or you I would say, fuck you. I have consistently mentioned that anytime anyone wants to sue us, you sue Alex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, like, that's, that's kind of my fear. It's like, I am okay with wanting to drag myself down with anything that I do or take whatever hate I get for something that I do. I don't want other people to be saddled with it because of me yeah i feel like with uh with our podcast because there are multiple people that are co-owning it and co-piloting everything it's harder to make a decision of let me go talk about this really hotly debated topic right now 
Yeah, let me go talk about trans issues in anime. <laughs> it's like, oh god, no. <laughs> Please don't. Yeah, certain hot button topics we uh, try to steer we, away from and for we've, we, exact for reason. For years now, we've made a very concerted effort not to bring politics into the things that we discuss for that very reason. That we don't want to alienate a proportion of our audience just because of the things that we say. I also just feel like politics has nothing to do with anime. So, like, why? Yeah, why the, why only, there, the only the like, only political but... stuff we've ever talked about on our podcast are like politics as they're portrayed in a specific anime. Yeah, like, like we like talked about time. the politics of like uh, Evangelion as they're portrayed in the in the show or in the movies. Oh, I was or gonna the say politics of uh, Gundam or Gundam. I was gonna say like president. Presidents of the U.S. who have appeared in manga or in anime, like Donald <laughs> Trump and um, Obama, <laughs> it's hilarious. The, do, you, do you remember the uh, the the Death Note one shot where Donald Trump appears at the end of it and he, uh -huh. he buys the Death Note? <laughs> There's what? what is have you not seen that? Yeah, it's a no, it came out. It's a thing. Five or six years ago now. Wait, was yeah. it done by the person who created Death Note? Like, it's an actual... Yeah. I believe so, yeah. I'm yeah. pretty sure and it's an official... It's yeah. it's like an official continuation of Death Note, and it's a one-shot, like, manga, and the, the whole thing revolves around a bidding war for the Death Note now that it's on Earth, and it becomes between uh, Xi Jinping of China and Donald Trump. That's and, like, hilarious. they just have a bidding war over this. Oh, that's actually super funny, but also at the same time, it's like, oh... More commentary about American politics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any specific creators you guys have followed for years that have changed uh, how they present their content or criticisms because of uh, stuff like this? So none. Mm, I mean, that, I think like, it's. I, follow. I I feel like I've I've been watching YouTube for so long. Uh. Creators, since you were a babby. Yeah, since I was a little babby. I was a YouTube kid. I was there before YouTube was created. <laughs> we uh, all were. <laughs> yeah, I, I was there long before YouTube was created. But I feel like content creators, as they create more content, they they mature and they grow and they stop making the same kind of content that they used to make 10 years ago. You know, like Markiplier. I, I used to... I didn't like him when he was making the Hot Wheels stuff. Like him and PewDiePie. But uh, when he stop doing the dyed hair screaming like face cam stuff that's when i started liking markiplier videos so yeah. i've definitely seen a bunch of uh creators that have changed over time but for the better for the most part uh there are some content creators that i used to watch where i'm just like wow you still exist <laughs> like <laughs> Bro, you really fell off. Like, you used to be pulling in millions of views. Now you're pulling in maybe, like, sub 50K. Like, wow. L plus ratio. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think anyone's really changed for the worse for the most part. Like, they don't. Oh, shit. He just pulled out a Nintendo. We're getting sued. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is that Nintendo? Does it say Nintendo? It does say Nintendo. Oh, on no. it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're fucked. Shigeru Miyamoto's gonna come punch me in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Give us our money! <laughs> but, yeah, I, I just feel like there's not a lot of content creators that have changed that much uh, from, like, making from making good videos to making bad videos. I There are some that, that have done stupid stuff and gotten in trouble. <laughs> well, it's just that... That's a whole nother matter, though. Either you evolve your content or you don't. And yeah. the views were, will reflect that because sometimes the stuff that you make is popular in, you know, for one month or whatever. And then the same stuff that you're making, if you've been making it for the last 10 years, now it's not. So you aren't pulling the numbers. But <laughs> you, you as... evolve your content or you die, unless you're Charlie. <laughs> in which case, you don't evolve at all. You just keep doing the same stuff over and over again and people keep watching. Yeah, but Charlie's he's a evolved huge it. outlier. Yeah, yeah, he has yeah, changed. Like he doesn't do the, do the potty mouth the stuff anymore. Tier no, you're, you're right. He has changed and, uh... in that regard. Yeah, <coughs> like the way that he presents his information and his content and stuff. Just like um, who's that voice actor? Pro ZD. Um, hmm. how he like his entire T of being on YouTube. He has always done just not clickbait titles i guess I, I don't know how you would describe it like it's all lowercase and it's just like 
nondescript, short, just like this is. Part- he doesn't make yeah, thumbnails yeah. either. Yeah, yeah, just like Charlie. Yeah, it's just like it. It's like he's. They're going against the meta, and for yeah. whatever reason, they've succeeded. Like, and it stands out. Outliers. It stands. It stands they're out because they're going against though. the meta. Well, but the thing is. They did it because purely because they were lazy and they didn't really care. And they're like, it, it, you know, it just goes to show the content is way more important than the presentation. Sure, the presentation can help facilitate, you know, caring about the SEO and stuff like that can help facilitate to grow your uh, channel faster and get more eyes on it and stuff like that. But it doesn't matter if your actual content isn't good. Yeah, you brought up Pro Z D. Mm-hmm. Like, I just want to shout out to that dude because, like, he is—he's uh, a voice in uh, Pluto from last year, and he does a damn good job. He's, he's a great a voice, an amazing voice actor. Yeah. Um, speaking <coughs> of change, I, I'm actually curious. What do you guys think of ad revenue and sponsorships? Uh affecting critical or review uh content creators make I mean, yeah when, when's so... that crunchy roll money gonna come in come on damn it's it. so <laughs> how much so we've much... talked about crunchy roll they're, they're never they're never <laughs> it's like so much not a, not an issue anymore i felt like it was such a big issue six or seven seven or eight years ago where it was like oh this is a sponsored video people would get really mad about it everyone mm-hmm. has seemed to understand the fact that Everyone has seemed to understand the fact that sponsorships are whatever and pay the bills. You know, I think there are certain brands you should do your due diligence about before having them sponsor your video. Like there yeah, is this to whole be fair, thing. I think you should do that with anyone that wants to sponsor your video. Yes. Well, like there's um, a there's a meta on hating. Um, is it air air up? Is it up? What? It's like it's the scent pods for the drinking water. It's like what? Yeah, it's I like I've never heard of this. That. I've never heard of this. Yeah, it's, so you're so, drinking normal water, but like you're smelling this, so it's like you're tasting yeah, flavored so, water. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. But there's, it's just essential oils in a ring around your straw, and you're just taking a sip. And so wait, it doesn't this affect whole... the flavor of the water. It just affects what you smell while you're drinking it. Well, yes, which affects the flavor because you're, yeah. you're just. I, that's part I of guess it. all yeah. factory senses are connected. So I. Yeah, that yeah, I, that's actually really I get interesting. That. When you first oh. said it, though, I, I thought it was like you know that like crystal light stuff or the mio that you put in the water. Like that's no, what I was no. thinking of. No, with with the stupid air up thing, uh, there has been a recent trend of people hating on it. That and uh, Fume, because they were pushing their sponsorships a couple months ago or last year really hard. And a lot mm. of people were, were like reviewing it and saying, like, oh, yeah, it's great. It'll help you drink more water. You're not ingesting any nasty chemicals or anything like that. It, it's great. It'll help you do this, do that. And then all of a sudden people started like other channels who were not as big as these big channels taking these sponsorships were like yeah this thing's a straight up scam and now there's a meta on like exposing these scam sponsors and i'm like what has happened here i mean if it's a scam like i don't mind it being exposed at all it's not so much a scam because like look the, the air up thing it's like like an apple okay do you know what an apple tastes like it tastes Land. like sweet it just tastes sweet yeah. If it's you like don't an smell an apple, it will it taste like an sweet. apple. Yeah. Well, you know that an apple tastes like an apple because you can smell the apple. If you don't smell an apple, like plug your nose and take a bite out of an apple, all you will taste is sweet. You won't taste well, an yeah. apple at all. It's like there'll be no when different. When you're from sick, food tastes different because you can't smell. Yeah. So like the the science behind how the air up thing works, I, I'm not even sure if that's what it's called. It's whatever people know what I'm talking about. Uh, it, sure, it we'll makes go sense. With that. But I just think it's funny that this, uh, you know, like people being afraid to make stuff because of their sponsors. It's it's funny that you mentioned that because there's literally people making content. Like there's a whole meta now about making content about sponsors. It's hilarious. I think it's it's a really interesting question in that I feel like normal channels when they get sponsored by like a Ray, like a Raycon, like a random brand, mm-hmm. will you will usually just do the sponsorship do the read and then that's it mm. um it doesn't really affect the content because it's not about the, like there's not as much synergy between the the sponsorship and the content right what i do think is a huge problem particularly in gaming um not really in anime but particularly in gaming and then stuff like um like god like disney adjacent stuff and stuff about like that like tr- music parks 
and like stuff mm-hmm. like that is people will is like brands have reached the point now where most brands don't want an objective review they want free influencer marketing right and so we're reaching the point now where there's so many people on youtube that i'm just gonna use gaming as an example because i'm the most familiar with it where they will just give these glowing reviews to these games because they'll get early copies of them and you'll be like oh this was great um and they don't go out they, they're just not going to give an objective review even if the game isn't good they're just going to give a positive review because they want to keep that connect because they're fans they're not journalists they're not essayists they're fans and they want to keep that connection with the brand strong so they keep getting preferable treatment they keep getting flown out for events they keep getting whatever like it's a big problem with some of like the big marvel like big movie channels that like talk about all the marvel movies and it's like every marvel movie is a great movie because they want disney to keep flying them out to premieres and stuff like that and it's becoming people are who aren't technically on payroll they're getting paid but they're not like a company not employees of the company so there's plausible deniability are just doing free free marketing they're doing marketing influencer marketing for brands and i think that's a increasingly large issue in media spheres at the very least yeah i i think that yeah i i will never take a sponsorship that i don't actually like or use like you could not pay me um enough to spawn get to say hello fresh is great like I, because of how the company is run and stuff like that, my own research into it and like the things that they do, I will never ever take that sponsorship. And what that's about NordVPN, how... John. <laughs> <laughs> NordVPN can sponsor us if they want. Those are they... a little different because I, for, particularly for individual creators, I accept the fact that some people need to pay their bills. Yeah. And so sometimes yeah. you need to take a sponsorship for the video, whatever. That's fine. I more so am like the thing I'm actually worried about, I guess not worried, but a thing I just see so much now is people who come off, who like they're trying their, their brand is like individual create creator. And they talk about whatever, but they're basically just doing marketing for a company, mm-hmm. but they're treated by their, their fans as an individual creator with their own thoughts. And it's just because it's become this really weird thing where people will value that person's opinion more than say like a journalistic outlet's opinion or a different creator's opinion right yeah it's, and it's uh, just it's, it's becoming the, a problem i mean it's you, you see this in like voice acting right the star power poll where it's like famous person is related adjacent to whatever this thing is product they sell and it's like oh well this person likes it or they're sponsored by it so i, I it must be good like a really good example of this, of what basically what I'm talking about, was the Jenny Nicholson um, Star Wars Hotel video. I don't know if anyone else watched that. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know what, you're what you're talking, talking about. about. Yeah. I know yeah. nothing um, about Star Wars. <laughs> it's on my to watch list. I've it been was the, it, off. it was this big, basically, role playing experience that Disney had launched a couple years ago. It closed this year, earlier this year. It was like a hotel in Orlando, and you would go there for two nights to an or two three days two nights i think oh, is this and like basically thirty thousand dollar thing yep it it was an immersive experience i don't know if it was that much but it was pretty expensive it, it was, was ex- it was really expensive, expensive but i don't and think it was quite that it expensive. was like an immersive experience it was supposed to be like you were going in a ship and all the employees were in character and you were there was like a storyline you know kind of like if you went to a show except it was a full three-day thing yeah, it was right. like it was like going to medieval times, except they spread let it out me, over three days, and you're involved directly Listen, involved let me, in yeah. the story. Just and the, the storyline evolves like, over time. Pay me a bunch of money in excess of like you know, pay me ten thousand dollars to stay at this kind of okay hotel for you to RP for three days that you're in Star Wars. Like, what the heck? Yeah, <laughs> but people were so doing odd. it. But then the problem that the reason why we're even talking about this at all is she her video was you know her experience it was not, she did not have a good experience there was a lot of complaints a lot of things that disney won't tell you like oh the app didn't work that you're supposed to use to like play the games there wasn't a lot of stuff mm-hmm. going on you know so the rooms like weren't as nice as they would have wanted for that price a lot of that kind of stuff and you compare that to 
the initial round of influencer reviews that came out about the experience, they're all like, oh, is the, oh my God, it's so immersive. Like it's the best thing I've ever done. It's because all of those people want to be invited back for future stuff like this. And that's right. just sort of, that is where I see there being an issue with how your content and how your sponsors or how your relationship with a brand affects how the quality of the video. Be because you become more interested in keeping up that appearance and keeping up that lifestyle of being like almost like a brand ambassador um, than you do about like objectively critiquing things yes. as best as you can. 100%. And I, that would happen in anime too. It's just that anime companies are don't are foreign companies are and, and cheap. They, <laughs> they well, they just don't. They're not going to like. Be, hey, here's our here's our anime before it's done. Do you want to review it? Like that's just not a thing that exists. It's just not a yeah. thing that will ever exist. So it, it's funny yeah, you I mean, mentioned uh, that though, because like Chris Broad, I remember he took a sponsorship from Creepy Nuts, the band. Wait, what? <laughs> yes, they, they paid. I don't know if he reached out to them or they reached out to him, but I remember he did a sponsored ad read for Creepy Nuts's like new single or new album that came That's out. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, this is. I have never seen this before, but you know, he's very popular as a um, YouTuber uh, in Japan. Yeah. Like, he he was literally he got interviewed by the Japanese media after the Logan Paul thing. It's like a cultural <laughs> ambassador. Hilarious. Are you YouTuber? Yes. Hi, YouTuber. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious but uh i i do see that there are more people reaching out to creators and being like hey we can have them be our uh, do an ad read for us even though it's like it's not a sponsored product that we're trying to push but it it's still someone who has a lot of pull has a lot of reach and yeah. you know chris broad at the time was very popular in japan so creeping nuts was just like yeah this is a great deal <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i guess to summarize what i what my thought on it is I don't see taking like a HelloFresh sponsorship on your anime video as something that will stifle your creativity. To me, that's just this person needs to pay their bills this month. Ad yeah. revenue doesn't always, videos get demonetized, all that kind of stuff. When it yeah. is a sponsorship that directly relates to the things you're talking about, then we're it's not even a sponsorship. It's just you're being flown out for something. You'll be giving an early review code for something. Then you have to really go out of your way to you know think about is this just paid is this just paid marketing or is this someone actually yeah, doing right. their due diligence and i you know like john said this doesn't really happen when well, and ian doesn't really happen with anime so much but if it did i would feel like like say an anime like crunchyroll for example i don't know why they would ever talk to us especially how much as much we bash them but let's just say crunchyroll came to us and said hey here's this new anime that's coming out that we think is going to do good next season we're going to let you watch it two weeks we're going to let you watch like, the first three episodes two weeks before they premiere uh and then we want you to do you know uh review on those three episodes like and have it come out this specific day i might do it but I would be very upfront at the beginning of that review and say, hey, Crunchyroll came to us. We they let to. us do this early. Yeah, and we, uh, Legally, we have our, to. That's, yeah, that's a legal yeah. requirement. Yeah, that's a legal but but requirement, I, would, I, I, know, I know that's a legal requirement, but I would be very, very, like, very specific with my wording. I would say, like, listen, I, we were paid to do this, but still we're going to do it as best we can. Yeah. So yeah. the other issue, though, is that when you get reproached for videos like that, they have a certain script that they want you to follow. Yeah. And it's hard to be objective when reviewing things like that, when it's like, hey, not allowed to say anything negative, for example. Yeah. You're only allowed to say how great it is. And quite literally, there are some sponsorships that will send you like, this is the script. Do not deviate from mm. this script. Do yeah. this script. And then there, from what I've heard, there's some sponsors that are like, "Hey, this is our thing. Go wild with it. Make your yeah. own sponsor. Uh, yeah, like, just talk about whatever. it for 30 seconds or whatever. Have like, have okay. it on screen for at least 13 seconds. I like those ones much better because they're like, yeah, have fun. Uh, just give us a, something glowing if you can. Um, side uh tangent to this, what do you guys think of Patreon and other forms of crowdfund? Uh, crowdfunding um, in terms of all this uh, pressure to cater to supporters expectations over your own creativity or the content you want to create what do you guys think so I think it's funny that uh, Alex put this in here because he's talked about this quite a lot about like 
mm. opening up a Patreon for uh, our podcast. But it's like an issue I've always had with that is like, what what kind of crap would we put on there? Like, I don't what know. What we, we, well, yeah, my I, I, I'd Alex like to do nudes. it. Yeah, yeah. I just, good God. Um, <laughs> I I've thought I've talked about it off and on over the last few years about doing it, but then I always struggle with like coming up with ideas for like what do we offer people that we that give us money every single month that we don't already offer to everyone who is either in our community or watches our our stuff on YouTube, and like I I get sp- membership streams maybe I don't know. I mean, it depends. It depends on what you want out of it. Because, like, I, I also understand the desire to be like, we want to have something of value for people. But also, you can always do, like, the pe- there are people out there who just want to support the creators they like. True. Right. And so that, it depends, right? I've never s- yeah. really seen anything too bad of, like, people being, oh, my God, I have to totally, totally kowtow to my patreon supporters but i'm sure it has happened where it's changed people's how they do their content but i think it's a net positive if nothing i think for a lot of youtubers when they do the patreon thing like uh members only like early release videos you get to watch a video like yeah a a couple days before anyone else like that i feel like that's a, a solid thing to do uh i know that for some like podcasting things they they will censor the free version and if you want the uncensored one and uncut one then you have to have a membership for like five dollars a month or whatever and i feel like that's something we could also offer but at the same time i'm like i so if I you want to the... see me take my shirt off no not that type of uncensored <laughs> put it away if you want to hear all the unhinged stuff that we definitely cut out <laughs> see i don't no, know i think that. i think i i'd be a little leery about even some of that stuff <laughs> i i don't like locking content away you know, as, yeah, someone, same. As, an, as an indie game developer, uh, I, I and who who does open source coding now, I like the idea that everyone should have access to anything at any time. Like that that's just in my opinion. Yeah. It just doesn't work until you have a larger audience, in my opinion. That too. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. you guys and my channel, I just were not large enough for it to be a draw for people. Yet. Right. Yet. Sure. Think positively. But for right now. <laughs> you know there's no draw like you the your the goal at this point is to get your stuff in front of as many eyes as possible yeah and so working on something that would be exclusive to a handful of people is not really worth the time or effort when yeah, you're a smaller sure. channel when you have you know hundreds of thousands of subscribers enough of those people will be willing to spend a couple dollars to get a video early or something and then there you go yeah, it's like one percent. Yeah, one percent of the people um, who watch your videos will actually interact with your stuff, like like, comment, yeah. subscribe, or even buy stuff. So, yeah, but it's like the you general. Even saying that, number. like, comment, subscribe. I've I've noticed that since we started doing that in every single episode, people are more apt to do it. It works. Yeah. It, it like I hate it. I hate it, but it works. I hate it so <laughs> much. <laughs> it works. I know. It's why we put the it's why we put the little like animation in our videos now and like I always put in the in the description and like I always pin the first comment that's always pinned is like and subscribe for more ACAD content. You know what's funny though? I I found myself always like ignoring that, but lately if I've been watching a like a some new creator I've found or something and I've been watching a lot of their content, sometimes I will catch myself after they say hey if you like my content you know like comment subscribe i'm like you know what i will subscribe (laughs) it's like it's worn me down to the point where you know what yeah yeah yeah, i you know what i think you're right i will subscribe it works see it works it It wears you down i mean for me personally like if i like something i'll be like yeah i'll give it a like if i actually want to follow someone because i uh like their stuff yeah i'm gonna subscribe and like eventually i'll be commenting as well i almost never share something Unless I find a really good point, and I'm like, oh, I gotta let the homies know about this. But yeah, that's just me personally. <laughs> See, I'm not. I wonder on if it's like social media platforms that have a network big enough to share stuff. Like, I interact with our Discord, and that's about it. Yeah, like, I, most of the it, time well, it, it'll be me sending a, <laughs> a video or whatever to group chats or something. 
<laughs> Until Wendy's pisses you off again. <laughs> Until Wendy's pisses me off again. <laughs> then you go on there on Twitter and be like, Ah, Wendy's, damn you! <laughs> yeah. One of the things uh, I forgot to bring up earlier, uh, barriers to entry for content creators. What do you guys think about uh, lower barriers of entry in content creation, especially nowadays, now that it's so easy to make a video and put it out there? I don't think there is a... So from a equipment standpoint, the barrier of entry has never been lower. Everyone has a phone. Everyone has freaking headphones that they can use to record on their... Like that, the, the Apple Air, Air phones, Air, 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 Air phones, whatever. Air, AirPods. AirPods? No, not the AirPods. The wired one that they have that they give you for free. Did they not what? give that anywhere? I haven't bought a new phone in a couple of years. So I don't know. No. Oh, buddy, I think you're like Apple. Way I, out of I don't think Apple gives away anything for free. You're lucky you get a fucking charger they... with that phone. <laughs> you don't get it anymore. Apple... You have to buy the charger. What? <laughs> oh, my oh my god! I have not bought. God, a new... Tim Apple sucks. <laughs> Tim Apple. <laughs> I haven't I haven't bought a new one in a while, but they used to give you headphones, uh, the wired ones that you could had a decent mic on it that you could make videos on uh, or record audio on. But yeah, the barrier for entry, at least from a second technological standpoint, has never been any lower. People have cameras; yeah. they're all really high resolution now. You can just start These recording yourself. Aren't that expensive? Yeah, it's like I mean These microphones. Yeah, the it's it's never been lower. You can literally use your iPhone or Android to record audio and it won't sound terrible. There are people who are big who that's exactly how they started. Hell, Windigoon started that way and he's got like 2 million subscribers now. But um in terms of barrier to entry for like getting into the top 1% echelon of YouTube uh, content creators, like yeah, there's a huge barrier there because they are playing with millions of dollars. They they can afford to do crazy shit. To, well, to that's scale years of up. hard work and all that. That that's a whole different matter. I don't think. I mean, some of them is years of hard work. The other, I wouldn't say blew was hard up. work. Yeah. Some of them have rich daddies and mommies. Yeah, some of them just are silver spoon. It's yeah. not. It's not yeah. what you know. It's who you know. <laughs> Ian, how about you? What do you think? Uh, it's. I mean, it's good. It's the fact that anyone can make th something is a very important. You know, so many people, so many voices we wouldn't hear from if that wasn't the case. Yeah. So I think it really services under over, underprivileged voices too. It's like yeah. a huge bonus to be. It'd be so easy to make videos and make stuff. Um, it has led to some saturation in every pocket of YouTube at this point, mm -hmm. um, which has made it very difficult to stand out. But I don't think complaining about that is worth giving up the fact that like tons of people are able to make things that weren't able to make things you know 10 years ago yeah yes. and you know even though there's millions upon millions of videos being uploaded every second right now there's still a deficit in consumed content because the problem with like the millions and millions of videos being uploaded is like it's all recycled content so it's not really content people want to consume but yeah I mean, there aren't millions and millions of anime YouTube videos being uploaded every day. No, not for no, anything, no. but just in general. No, no, no. TikTok but, viral I mean, hack recipes and stuff like that. Yeah, or people just making the most I mean, god-awful stuff and just putting it out there. I'm trying to remember what the statistic is. I think if you have over 1,000 subscribers, you're in like the top 15% or top 12% of channels on the website. Oh, wow. We're over getting there. Thousand yeah. We're getting there. Uh, I remember the the metric for twitch Eight. at least a couple years ago was if Eight you had more than more than 10 was it 10 concurrent it's, i think it's 8 to 10 or 10 to 12 it's somewhere in there you're yeah, in the like, top yeah like top five percent or something yeah like that. top eight something if you have 12 concurrent viewers or more you're in the top eight percent of twitch yeah, streamers yeah. it's like wow that's insane yeah um i don't know what would that viewership be on youtube you think in terms of just specific view numbers for a video, uh, see, or average view I, numbers. It's a shame to say this, but I feel like I the entire goal of a YouTube channel in my like, if you haven't hit a million, then it's like, what are you doing on YouTube? But even though that's not true, you know, if you if you hit over like fifty thousand subscribers on a YouTube channel, you can actually make a profit off 
the YouTube. You turn YouTube into a full time job at that point. Uh, you just have yeah. to be smart with how you do advertising and stuff like that. But because I, I do watch a couple of YouTube channel people who talk about that, like how to grow, uh, not grow your channel, but like how to monetize better, how to effectively like start making YouTube work for you. And here are the steps that you can take. Uh, just buy my 12 hour course on this on discord or whatever. <laughs> so people like to say nowadays that sub count doesn't really matter as much as it used to which is true but it's a weird it's a weird thing in that i think it doesn't matter once you have a sub count you know if you have over a hundred thousand subs th that's really cool there's only so many channels that have that but what's what happens is that some of those could be dead subs some and so what people will say is your sub count doesn't really matter it's what you're doing average video views right yeah, yeah. like yeah. i i can literally I, bot, yeah. I can pay for a service for like i think it's like two thousand dollars or something and they'll give you like a thousand subs or something like that there's it's a guy who's exposing now. yeah it's super cheap and it's just like it's just that's why you see so many AI generated content channels have so many subs and like absolutely zero people commenting. Or if they do have like a hundred or so comments, it's people saying nice video, great video. Yeah. But I do think sub count matters for smaller channels. Yes. And it's one of those things where I feel like, maybe this is something we can just talk about. I feel like a lot of the times the advice that is given from people who have bigger channels isn't always the most useful advice for a smaller channel it depends on the level of where you're at because yeah, i think I mean, subs it, does it, matter because those are people yeah. that have decided to subscribe to a small channel right and some of that might be dead subs sure but like if you have 2k or you have 10k functionally that is different i understand the point people are making in that there's some channels that have 10k subs that got them seven years ago for a uh, like for some reason, there's a lot of people who have like a big Pokemon video of like, explaining like how to. I, this is a tangent. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. Go, I'm gonna take <laughs> us back. But it was just like I don't, for some reason I've discovered that people have like a video of like how to how to get Lugia and Pokemon Soul Silver. It has like six hundred thousand views, and that's like all their subs are from. And then all of their anime videos have like hundred views. I don't know. Sorry, that was a weird weird tangent. No, 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 I have I've, seen the exact same thing I've though. Discovered. I have. I've seen I, that too. Um, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. <laughs> what is that? Uh, it's just it's just a weird like me, small YouTube channel thing where if you had one video that's not related to your current content blow up, you have a lot of subs, but a lot of them are dead subs. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, I get it. Like I get what people are saying when they say subs don't matter. But the other one that, it, that frustrates me is the, the age old like, well, it's not the algorithm doesn't matter it's the audience and I, 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 I think it's scale that matters because enough people are watching your videos that if the audience for those videos isn't reacting positively towards it then yes i understand that could be the problem when yeah. you're only getting 300 or 3,000 views on a video it's just not being shown to enough people like that's yeah. the problem not that oh well the audience isn't interacting with like i guess it is to some extent i guess if all 300 of those people liked the video and shared it and commented and had 100 percent watch time it would do great but like i don't know that that advice specifically just frustrates me when you you're just like not acknowledging the fact that this algorithm does greatly impact how channels grow on the platform yeah it's like so I remember, I think it was Anthony. Was it Anthony? It was someone from Smosh um, that talked about how, like, one of the ways that they grew was that someone that they had helping manage their channel, like, up, they, they signed up for the service that basically implanted the Smosh videos, embedded it into, like, websites mm -hmm. all across the internet. So they would pump up, artificially pump up their views to get into the algorithm to be recommended. And they were just getting a bunch of comments, hate comments, like, why why is this being recommended to me? Why is this yep. on here, this and that? And it's like, they didn't know why, because they didn't ask. But it's like, yeah, you can say that the algorithm doesn't matter, but it's been proven time and time and again. Yes, it does, especially when it's you're starting to grow. It does matter. Yeah, I mean, 
Uh, it also is it's frustrating for smaller creators especially people just starting out because not everyone is going to have a, a damn phd in how seo works or uh how to properly title your videos or add tags and it's like it's a learning process it really is i think for newer creators for stuff like that like the technical yeah. side of uploading videos and there's a lot of misinformation about it because old stuff yeah. doesn't work anymore and some news people will be like I, I just whenever I see anyone being like this is the secret to getting your it, it's I just know it's fake because if it was the secret every everyone it wouldn't would be, be a secret doing <laughs> yeah. it that I if mean it was a, yeah it's funny that you say that because that is true for certain things I know that on uh, YouTube Shorts there are secret little hacks that you could do like for TikTok and for short content in general like on uh, Instagram Reels or on TikTok or on YouTube Shorts there are certain songs that if you have playing will just be recommended more like um there was that that vietnamese song where it was like the the hip dance thing where they're doing the sway oh yeah yeah, yeah. i know using that about. for a while a couple like last year i think it was was like just if you just had that song playing no matter what your content was on the screen for the short for your tiktok or whatever it would just get more views it just does and it was the same for a, there's it was the same for that Beyonce song for a, a little while a couple months ago like a month or two ago, where it's like um, the Saint Texas that her country song that she released. Yeah, but then that stuff happens, and then everyone starts using it, and then it's saturated, and then it's yeah. Like a couple years ago, there was this big thing That's where YouTube YouTube was pushing um, community posts, mm -hmm. and if you made a mm -hmm. you can make a community post with like a poll, and suddenly thousands of people who weren't subscribed to your channel would see it. You know, it's funny. And then I, everyone started doing it. And then it. I, I interact with polls for channels I don't even watch or subscribe to <laughs> just because it's a poll. I'm like, I, yes, I do like filling out answers. On it's, yeah, I do like filling out forms. Give me forms to fill out, please. Let me do a survey for Japan, you. Japan, please let me in. I love filling out forms. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that even like, I don't know if it's still that way on YouTube. I, I do for our YouTube channel put out community posts every so often i try to do one at least once a week normally in the middle of the week just reminding people hey there's a new episode of the podcast out go check it out you um, should start posting uh questions like are you enjoying this season of anime yeah i really like it, i really should gonna get you more impressions man i really should I i've also noticed like on on twitter i don't know if it's it's this way for everyone but when i do like um when i put a post out that's got a poll in it I typically get way more interaction with that specific post than I would for just a random other post that I would put out. People Even if like it's about filling the same out concept. answers. People mm -hmm. just like filling out answers. I don't know why. It's I think it's, I think on Twitter at least, I think it's because when you vote, you immediately see the results of it as it stands currently. And I oh, think people yeah. want to see if people share their opinions. Oh. I feel like it's like that on YouTube as well on the uh, community polls when you do that. Yeah, I definitely, uh, <laughs> I definitely think about that when I vote for something. It's like, who's your favorite Pokemon? I'm like, Garchomp. I've also noticed. <laughs> no, I've also noticed in our Discord server we put up polls. People will respond to that that never even interact in our server. <laughs> Dude, it's just part of the just gamify stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just turn we need to learn how to min max all of our content john help me help me john just turn it all into top 10 lists and turn it into polls and we're good to go it's fine <laughs> who cares about making passionate like we spent an hour and a half riffing about being passionate and creating content like no forget all of that let's just be surface <laughs> level let's just just make do, polls just make just... polls and top lists and whatnot ian you've you we've cracked the secret this is the <laughs> secret just make polls just make polls <laughs> So if luck if you want to grow big on YouTube, just make polls. So Alex, uh, contrary yeah. to your belief, we actually did make it through the list. We oh. did, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have we actually, actually hit we've hit point. on everything. I think I I listed out here. Yeah, I still, for the love of me, don't know what I was gonna put for this one bullet point that's empty. There was oh, something here's that was a, gonna here's go a there. big thing, big tip. If you think of something, write it down immediately. Don't <laughs> wait like Alex until you know, next morning and forget. You'd think, you'd think having this next to me I would, but no. No, I didn't write it down because I thought my brain would be like, pop right off that pillow and it's going to be like, just like it was last night. Nope. That brain what was completely fool. wiped. 
What a fool. This is why we have a topic brainstorming channel and a WTF talking points I know. channel. Because if I don't write it down, <coughs> I will literally have thoughts. And then about 10 seconds after I have that thought, it will be gone forever. So... I will say there was there was something earlier I was going to say about the shorts that we put out because someone actually mentioned it to me in, in our Discord server. I cannot for I cannot remember who it was. If it was you, please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, but someone asked about a, a short that I put out. It's like, I remember watching that episode you said that was from, and I didn't remember seeing that thing from the short in the episode. All right, let me let me give you a little uh, top tip about our shorts. Half the time, John, John picks out all the stuff that gets turned into shorts, and half the time it comes from our B-roll footage from before we actually start the episode, so you don't <laughs> actually see it in the episode. <laughs> yeah. I hate to burst anyone's bubble, but half the time we're selling our podcast based on stuff that doesn't make it in. <laughs> Because I like pre-roll stuff. You get because it's it's a peek behind the curtain of what we're like instead of talking about our content. <laughs> Which is why you should Which tune is... into our WTFs, because our WTFs are basically our pre-roll the entire time. <laughs> yeah. And why you should join our Discord server, because you get unhinged John rants 24-7. Because I if I don't word vomit all over people the instant I have that thought, I will lose it. It sucks. It's because like it'll be it. it'll be it'll be like two o'clock in the morning and like no one's active and all of a sudden John comes in and like let me give you a fifteen line thing about why fucking QA in another world sucks. <laughs> the amount of times I've woken up uh, and just looked and I just see like three paragraphs from John I'm like oh, I'll, <laughs> I'll read this later I don't have time for this. I'm creating content for the people. Which is why they yes. should join our Discord. <laughs> you really should. Also because we do stuff in our Discord server from time to time with gotcha. our community. And I think that's also something that's definitely gotten, I guess, better, maybe, question mark, with with content creation too, is like the sense of community because it seems like everyone has like their Discord servers or, or their game nights with their followers or whatever, stuff like that, which you didn't see, especially like with YouTube content creation, like, you know, five, six, seven years ago. Yeah, it, right. de it depends. I think it just depends on the, on the creator and what their content is like and what their community they're fostering is. Some creators oh, don't true. want don't want discords at all. I've had plenty of people, much larger generally, don't want discords just because it's just like another place well, they don't for want something to, to go wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, right. I personally hate running our Discord. I I like to be on a on the Discord to just rant. But if someone else would like to just like run it as a fan and just let me go there to rant, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to moderate it anymore. <laughs> We don't currently have any mods on our Discord server, so if anyone are in our mods. Discord server, uh, you know, the people who are admins, my, uh, all the four of us that run the podcast are the mods. Uh, if anyone would like to take that role from us, we would gladly appreciate it. Because <laughs> it's one less thing we have to worry about. And we'll definitely pay you, wink. <laughs> in exposure. Oh, God. Yeah, exposure's not bad. Not for not for us. <laughs> yeah. Um <sighs> That's it though. I've gone through all of our talking points that I, I wrote down. So if anyone has anything else they want to bring up on this topic, please feel free. Nope. I think no? I'm good. I can complain about stuff, but like Go for it. We don't the the it. people we don't we, I have found that people, yeah. No, listen, I, we have found that our 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 listeners, our watchers, our followers love when people complain, so go for it. No, my let your hatred out. Literally my only thing that I, I've talked about this on the podcast before, actually, last year when we did a content creation like a more anime focused content creation episode. Yeah. About how I just watching the last basically decade i guess of how the community interacts with youtube con or just like anime creators it's like very toxic where it's become a lot of people don't care don't want to watch content and that's just a large portion of the community and then there's a lot of other people on twitter and on other socials like reddit specifically that just hate like anime youtuber is a like basically like derogatory term for those people <laughs> where anytime they'll go oh, they're at it again 
oh, they're ru like ruining anime again. Like it, it, it's for some reason, I think it started on Reddit and it just bled into Twitter where there's just these groups of people that you could make any, you could make any video in the world. You could make the best anime YouTube video ever. And they would just not watch it because on principle, because they don't like quote unquote anime YouTubers. And I just think it's a huge problem in the community in terms of growing channels and like, because everyone complains about the people at the top and that's fine. But then what happens is they don't go looking for the smaller channels that th are going to give them what they want. Like particularly the yeah. people that are like, there's no, it's all brain dead content. All these people have terrible opinions. There's no, no one being thoughtful and just like that, like we are on Reddit. Right. And then <laughs> there are, yeah. There are. It's just that for whatever reason, I guess people just like complaining. They just want to have this thing to complain about. They never ever go and put in the work to be like, oh, who's the channel with 30,000 subs who's making really good stuff that I want to watch? They just, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's just they don't want to watch it at all and they're just complaining because they like complaining. That's probably part of it. It's just something I've observed the, the last couple I mean, of years. I think their biggest problem is they're on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, but it's people on Twitter too. It's like it's just like it's become a pretty it's common on all social media, yeah. Held conception. And part of that is probably from the fact that a lot of the say some of the biggest channels make more, you know, not lowbrow content, but more stuff that's like directed at a wider audience and not directed at people who want to talk thoughtfully about you know, media critique. But then the problem is you need to then find the people who are doing that and then pu push them up and they, people don't do that. And that's the thing that frustrates me the most. Like Reddit yeah. is super right. Anti no, you can't felt self promote, no self promotion. That's their day. You self promote on any anime, like on our ant slash anime or one of the specific show show subreddits, you get removed immediately. And then you have to the, the rule is like, you have to have like nine posts out of 10 that aren't self promotion is where the common rule is a lot of places. Um, but then nobody does the work to promote small channels anyway. That's the thing. Now, see, now I'm just complaining. Now I am just bitching. But like the <laughs> thing that would always annoy me let was it would be flow like, through you. <laughs> I get it, right? Because if you let self-promotion happen, half of r slash anime would be people with 10 subs. It'd be garbage. Posting their video content over and over and over and over and over again. I get it. But it's the, it's like the vitriol people have for any type of YouTube content in that space. And then they'll go and they'll post the new Giguk video and everyone will upload it. And it's just like, but then what's, what's the what, point what, of what? what? Huh? Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. No, it, your your funny, actions don't match your words. It's funny you mentioned that because time. that happens in the, so VTubing has become super big and it's become super saturated, completely yeah. oversaturated. Yeah. Where like there's this whole sphere of indie tubers who are just so they're they're all like part of this community on like Twitter and stuff where it's like they, they all talk about how they they should support one another because they're all small and this and that. And it's like the most toxic place I've ever seen in my life. Of, it's of the indie it's YouTubers. like high school all over again. Well it's like, oh, yeah. we're not like those big channels and everyone likes these big channels because they're big and they're part of like cover or they're part of um V Shoujo or something. And they, they have all these complaints and bitching about these big creators, yet they try to emulate the big creators themselves, and they never help out the other small people. They just want help for themselves. And it's like, yeah. it, it's it's a, just a giant problem with... Um, <laughs> anyone with an anime profile picture has this problem, to be honest, okay? <laughs> like, I'm just going to just generalize that Hold right on. now. Let me, uh, let, me, let me slide so I can get my, my, my whole life merch better in frame for you. Oh, it's Lord. tough because streaming is a lot more of a zero sum game. Technically, none of it is a zero sum game, you know, but streaming is a lot more of a zero sum game than YouTube is to me, where you, there's only so many people that are going to watch a live stream and they need to be, and you need to be live and they need their, like, because with YouTube, you can release a video and people will get to it when they have time. People will watch it in parts. People could watch it in five. It's a long video. People watch it five parts. People could watch it weeks later. The live stream, it has to be that. I mean, you can watch VODs, but it's just it's not the same. 
You, no, it has like to be they, that moment in time, and you can't be actively engaging in more than one stream at a time. It's just not something you can do. Yeah, yeah. The I, I definitely think it's harder to be a streamer than it is to be a um, well, not necessarily harder. They're very different. Being a streamer yeah. versus being yeah. a uh, video maker, like a content yeah. creator for like YouTube or something. I would like also that. Ar- I would also argue it's a different skill set. Yeah, because good at both. <laughs> I feel like people, for streaming, it's really about the culture around being there live to witness things mm-hmm. because you're, you're basically like you're you're on board with them. That's why um the in real life just chatting category on Twitch blew up so much is because when it was still like Justin TV before it went to Twitch, it was all about video games and this and that. But then the huge blow up of just chatting because they created the category for it. For now, people can just not play video games they can just sit there and talk watch videos just hang out it, and that's what feeds, people want it feeds into the parasocial a lot better than youtube does yeah yeah YouTube still has oh, it for sure when you're talking to someone live and they're responding to you live it's a whole different experience than watching someone talk at you in a video three years ago john and i did a, a podcast episode about that very thing <laughs> did we parasocial yeah, relationships about- Parasocial relationships and streaming, yeah. Mm, but yeah, basically the whole point of this this whole tangent I went on was just <laughs> that I feel like for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because the community has gotten bigger and it hasn't been able to branch. Because 2020 was a huge turning point for the anime community and that it just got so much bigger than it was before. And so it's not as close knit as it, like it used to be before I was making videos, basically every anime channel knew each other. Yeah. And now there's yeah. just so many that it's hard to have form that community with other creators. And then to, and then the issue is that the, over that time, for whatever reason, a lot of people have become antagonistic towards the creators themselves and just refuse to watch content for whatever reason. Which is a damn shame. It's like, give people a chance at the least. If you reject them after you give them a chance, that's one thing. But if you don't give them a chance at all, who are you to criticize? Yeah, it's just complaining for the sake of complaining, in my opinion. It frustrates me whenever time I see it. Internet, everybody. (laughs) Internet, nutshell, really. Ian, we anti-tubers truly are the most oppressed people. (laughs) (laughs) Keep oppressing yeah. the weebs. They need to be um, oppressed. I, the, the, the crazy thing is, I, I don't know. I feel like it's almost a Pandora's box thing because there's so many voices out there and because it's so not close-knit, like you said, I don't know if there's ever any going back to that. Like, obviously, the really there big is. channels are still going to collaborate with each other, but... No, there's no going back to it. It's just old YouTube. I don't yeah. think it's necessarily a bad change. It's just different. It's yeah. Cuz it's definitely I, it's definitely again, different. That's I've for been sure. complaining about AnyTube as a monolith, but there's so many different parts of it. Of just yeah. that specifically, that there's whole other problems at play where like you know, people will only watch like shonen power scaling videos and then like the different kinds of content. Can Goku be Superman? Right? Like there's this whole brand of content I always find very interesting. That's like what if videos, and some of those do numbers. Some of those do like up to a million or over a million, and it's just like somebody talking about like fan, basically writing their own fan. It, no, it's just writing it your own. Literally, fan fan it's fan just fan writing your own fan. Fan fan That's yeah. all yeah. it is. Ao3 strikes yeah. again. Yes. <laughs> the other one that's really interesting is we have talked about this last year when i was in the podcast is react content because Mm -hmm. there are massive because i don't watch that stuff at all and i don't know anyone who does it and so every time i kind of wade into it it's very bizarre to me because there are some of the biggest channels out there that do anime content are react channels and yet most people in the anytube sphere are hesitant to include them in the like oh yeah this is anime youtube because it feels like so such a different type of content than what is traditionally you know reviews or video essays or whatever and so it's a very 
almost combative between those two groups of people too and it's just like i don't know there's so much interesting inner drama that goes on with stuff yeah i i just like you said i I don't know there's no way to go back it's old youtube so i guess we have to live in this new uh new space that's been created for us the only thing i ask is that people actually go out of their way to find the content they want to watch instead of complaining that it doesn't exist because it almost certainly exists it almost certainly exists exists like there was a whole i'm not gonna go into it but there was a whole drama on on twitter this week about how there wasn't an isn't enough shoujo content on youtube um and there there is there's plenty of incredible content creators that talk about shoujo it's just that people don't don't go find it people don't care enough to go and find a channel that has you know i haven't even I haven't even heard of uh, this drama, but I know that's complete <coughs> bullshit because I've seen uh, shoujo content creators like way long ago. So, like, I know it's a thing. I know it's been a thing for a long time. There's and you know, if tons of you them. don't, if you don't think the content exists out there, go make it then. Yeah, yeah. biggest thing. <laughs> The barrier for entry is so low these days. And, yeah, and, like, if there is that very niche thing that you're interested in and there is maybe only a handful of voices or even no voices out there talking about it, start talking about it. You know, get yourself, take your phone and and put it on a tripod. Get your, get a mic, a cheap-ass mic. Start talking about it. You might not be, you might not be making, like, you know, award-winning videos at first, but, hey, everyone starts somewhere. Our our first couple episodes of this podcast suck. It's like they really it's suck. Sucks doesn't begin <laughs> to begin like, to describe. <laughs> the pre video ACAD was kind of rough. Yeah, I, I would oh, say I about the, that. the last the last <laughs> year or so we were doing audio only was okay, but I think once we moved over to video, it was better. It's better content because you actually get to see our reactions to things. Instead of just hearing it, right, and you get to admire especially our when pretty wallpapers, and you can admire, yeah, you can admire our our. We definitely get pussy. I'm just saying. Look <laughs> at all this merch. Jeez, he has nothing on his wall. <laughs> I have so many posters that I haven't put up yet. <laughs> Ian, where's your wallpapers? We haven't hung. Look at behind him. Look at behind I mean, there him. Is There's a lot so of much stuff shit. Behind me. We haven't yes, hung anything know, like, where's the... mm. I mean, he been, I, I don't. Well, I won't. I won't mention it because it's probably personal stuff. But um, he he might uh, have to take it down soon if he puts it up. Just putting that out there. Yeah. We oh, might be right, moving right. Again, so I, I sh- we haven't put a ton of stuff up at the moment. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> Which is fair enough because when I was about to move last year, after I bought a bunch of posts, it's like, nah, I'm not putting this shit up. Yeah, you just have to take it down. It's just a whole thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean that's kind of the state of content creation. Um, I uh, it's kind of a different episode than we usually do, but I'm glad we had this discussion because it was it was very interesting. Um, I hope uh, those of you out there who watch uh, also found it interesting. Um, I, I like doing these kind of dives into like the whole meta behind what we do. Yeah, it's just so tough to cover everything. I mean, we've been going for two hours, and I feel like there's so much stuff we missed. And it's just, mm. it's just. I think what happens is you need to narrow it down to a specific subgenre, because when you kind of take, yep. talk about content creation as a whole, it's so varied these days that there's it a is. different way to go about gaming versus anime versus music versus f- cooking versus whatever for streaming, and yeah. then there's subgenres of streaming. And so I just feel like it's so difficult to talk about it at, at like at a broad view like this. Oh, that's yeah. Fair. Like, yeah. Uh, God, that was something I was going to bring up. I don't know if I put it down in the WTF channel, but there's a TikTokification of music nowadays where there are songs created to be just used. That for, could like, be its own episode. Oh, no, you no, guys man. can just do your own episode <laughs> about that. It's, well, I, I think know. John wants to talk about it on the next WTF. I don't remember if I which, wrote it down, but I, I realized you that. Did. I was like, 
I was, I was listening to a song that was a, a popular song that everyone was using in their freaking shorts. And I was like, wow, this like 15 second part is really good. And then I listened to the song. I'm like, wow, it's, it's all but hooks. The 15 se- yeah. It's a two minute song hooks. with a good hook. And the rest of the song is, is nothing. And then there's another hook. <laughs> yeah. <it>. And <laughs> yeah. Just like, what the heck? This is, this is such a TikTok song. Yeah. And like, I, you know, I often I often wonder if people are starting to write like TV shows and movies for that to for it to be used in like short form content. Like they they they, they they write these specific scenes knowing that people are going to use them and clip them for for short form stuff. I'm more th- I'm more to think the issue there know. is that people have started making TV shows like their movies. Like yeah, a, uh, eight episode oh. TV uh, show. Oh, it's just like I'm making an extended. Eight hour That's, move, eight hour movie. Listen, and it's that like, is no. It's not how television, <sighs> as a medium, is supposed to work. That is something I definitely I could go for hours talking about that shit and how it fucking infuriates me. How you get television with, like, has become episode just three, movies. episode four, that are nothing, and people are like this is so boring. It's because people are they've they've written it like it's the middle part of a movie, but you're not watching it all at once. It's yeah. It's very frustrating. It's, it's frustrating. It all stems from like loss, though. Like, there's, I could talk about this ad nauseum. <laughs> See, <laughs> this is exactly shows. why. One of these days, this is exactly why I want to have Ian on a WTF, just so we can just bullshit about stuff like this and not have to have a focused conversation. God. One of these days, we're gonna have a WTF where you're not gonna be busy. I swear to God. <laughs> you know, you would have to think eventually it would happen, but we'll see. I guess. <laughs> we will this man's see living a full life yeah yeah very full um going to like every baseball game under the sun <laughs> <laughs> been to 14 this year so good Lord. <laughs> good god i've been to more this year than i've been uh in 19 years past year, so. good god but anyway i think that's a good spot uh to end it thank you everyone for dropping in to watch us thank you ian um for uh joining us again uh we love having you on the podcast thank we, you for having me <laughs> we keep inventing excuses to invite you on i'm not gonna lie oh well, there you go <laughs> you say we it's all alex man he loves having you i on. enjoy talking to ian he i'm not gonna crush on you so you guys don't enjoy having me on that's what i'm hearing from no that. that's exactly <laughs> <right>. <laughs> oh fuck we got caught <laughs> You caught me. Natai <laughs> hates it. He told me himself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we love you. Um, before, we, be- before I do the rest of the outro, do you want to plug uh, your channel and everything, Ian? Yeah. You can find me on YouTube and on Twitter at Be More Brass. Um, I make. See, you always say I make video essays, and I don't say that about myself because the only thing I've ever made that's a video essay, in my opinion, is the Chainsaw Man video. And it's um, really good. Yes, it's the, it's the my best favorite thing, thing ever I've made. ever made. But I just like I make anime content, but I haven't made much this year. I'm working on a Full Metal Alchemist video. I think I talked about that in the last episode I was on, which is the episode before <laughs> yeah. this. So I've already talked about it. Um, so looking forward that to keep, that. Keep having them on. And it's like I'm working on it. I'm, I'm working, still working on, on it. <laughs> It'll be out at some point. Hopefully next month. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> sometime this year probably maybe. sometime this year oh this and decade, i'm maybe. i'm at like 2800 and change subs and when i hit 3000 i have to watch steins gate which i've never watched before so oh, if, nice. you're interest, if you're watching um, this and it all interested in that there you go hell yeah damn that's pretty cool uh yeah go go uh subscribe to ian uh he's got a lot of good content i want to see i want to see you watch and review steins gate because i love steins gate it would probably be it would be a video about it. I don't know if it would be a review, quote unquote. I don't know. Well, I'm I mean, kind of shifting away from that kind of stuff, but maybe I need to just I've I say that I've released two three videos this year that aren't like podcast type content. So <laughs> do I make anything anymore? It's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm hearing though is if 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 Ian makes it to three thousand and he watches Steins Gate, we're gonna we're gonna schedule I'll... a Steins Gate spoiler cast, right? Just for yeah, him, right? I'll probably have something to say about it in a video. But <laughs> haven't we already done a Steins Gate spoiler cast? Have we? If we have, it's been a long time ago. Oh, it's like we got to do it again, I guess. Oh well, you know, well you to be fair. My arm. <laughs> to, yeah, we don't have this twist to my arm either. To be fair, we have gone back and redone some old stuff just because we realized some of the old stuff was not done very well. 
Um, and it gives us a chance to do it again. Um, speaking of anyway, recycling content. <laughs> yeah, speaking of recycling content. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for dropping in to watch us. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff if you like what you saw and you want to see more. Also, check down below for links to where you can find Anime Club After Dark everywhere. We uh, do stuff. We also have a link to our merch store down there if you uh, want to help us that way. But with that being said, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight, everybody. Good night. Bye. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>